Hello everyone and welcome to my great sword build for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak post bonus title update. So this is a uh, more Unga Rage Slash focused build, so the Unga Bunga charge style of gameplay rather than the meta counterplay of Strongarm Stance. So to go hop right into it, looking at our skills, we have 7 points of attack boost for all the attack of course. 5 points of Agitator, so we have increased attack and affinity when a monster becomes enraged. 5 points of Critical Eye to help with our weapon's negative affinity. We'll go more into that later. 3 points of Critical Boost and Weakness Exploit, of course. 3 points of Focus, so that way our charge attacks come out faster, as it is mandatory for this style of gameplay. 3 points of Stun Resistance, so we don't get stunned. 3 points of Wire Bug Whisper, so we get our Wire Bugs uh, recovered as fast as possible. 3 points of Defiance to, for Roar Immunity when the monster becomes enraged, 2 points of Peak Performance, 2 points of Recovery up, 2 Blight Resistance, that just happens to be on the Talisman, uh, the 1 point of Divine Blessing, 1 point of Invade Extender, so that way we have uh, our dodges are much more- or much, <laughs> dodges are better, my brain just short-circuited. Uh, speed Sharpening, so just happens to be filler. Spirit Birds call, that way we can get Spirit Birds as the hunt progresses, and Powder Mantle, which is on the chest, but that helps out with our DPS immensely. So then, to get into our equipment, we are using the Amatsu Greatsword. Uh, this is augmented to simply have 5 points of affinity. We have the additional 5 attack and 10 element from the augment unlocking slots. So we have 365 raw attack, 68 water element, and just a pinch of purple, just a pinch. And negative 20 affinity, it is normally at negative 25, but since we have the augment, it's at negative 20. No regular slots, but a three level 3 rampage. And this is typically just going to be for, whatever, for the exploit of whatever it is you're hunting. Because we can't really use the aura soul with this, you can. It acts like burst, and since we're very slow weapon this is basically nothing so we want all the exploits for that the helmet we have the nagaron helmet for two points of critical eye one point of wire bug whisper and two level two slots which we have critical jewels in there for two points of critical boost the risen kaiser mail for three additional points of critical eye one point of weakness exploit and 1 point powder mantle with 2 level 2 slots, each have attack jewels for 2 levels of attack boost. Malzano braces, these are augmented to have an additional level 1 slot with an additional point of light resistance and divine blessing, so not too much of a change there from what you would normally have. This also has 1 point of wire bug whisper, so we have 2nd level of that, 2 more points of attack boost. Uh, Level 4 and level 1, we have our Hard Steadfast in level 4, that would be a full stun resistance, and Grinder is in the level 1 as just to fill up the slot. And then, the Volcana Waste, a Rhyme Guard Coil. Now, this augment is much more significant as it gives us a point of critical boost, and upgrades one of the normally three uh, level 3 decoration slots with a level 4 decoration slot. But we lost Frostcraft out of this, and since we're not focusing on it, that's not too much of a big deal. We have this mate entirely for the three levels of focus that are just on it, so we don't have to worry about that with a blah, blah, blah. Worry about that with our decorations. Let me take a drink real quick. And talk when the mouth is dry. So, it, oh, so for our decorations, we have... Challenger Jewel Plus for two levels of Agitator, a Jumping Jewel for a point of Evade Extender, and a Wirebug Jewel for the third and final level of Wirebug Whisperer. For the legs, we have the Golden Loon Greaves. These are simply augmented with stability, so not much to worry about there. We have these for the three levels of Defiance, so we're immune to roars. It also has two levels of Performance and Recovery up. That's where those. And then a level four and a level two, which both have Challenger Jewels. For the remaining three levels of agitator for the talisman this is a level three attack one recoil down three two one talisman so in our uh, level three and level two we have tenderizer jewels for two levels of weakness exploit and spirit birds call in level one so we can get spirit for that skill i almost explained the skill again <laughs> 
it's a late night. Ugh. So, on to Twitch skills. This is going to be different depending on which scroll we are using. Of course, we have Tackle. This is shared between both. In red, we have Rage Slash. Of course, this is our primary charge attack. This way we can be very tanky and still deal nice, good damage and don't have to worry about getting knocked on our ass all the time. So, Charge Slash combo, of course, because we need to charge. This is not a not a Surge Slash combo. I almost forgot the name of it. Adamant Charge Slash is our primary wirebug skill. This gives us more hyper armor, helps us gain distance. Or not gain distance, but close distance. And still do, do really good damage. We can go from this straight into Rage Slash. So very good synergy there. Power Sheath, of course, for the attack boost and the, and the free sheath. So that way we can use this to get out of a bind if we need to. Now in the blue scroll, we have... Strong arm stance and charge slash. This is mainly if the monster falls asleep. So if the monster falls asleep, we put down a little barrel bomb, use strong arm stance, and then through charge slash to court. Shat. Slash. Why do I keep saying shash? Anyway, so that is our build. Very straightforward. Good old Unga Bunga. I do prefer this over the counterplay. I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, sure. Now with this, we are going to go a little bit on uh, the lower end side. You know what? You know what? Where, where, where are you? Where, 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 where are you? Well, no. There you are. This sounds fun. Nagaron's always fun. Oh, it's just two here. I thought there would have been three. Then again, this is the story quest, so I guess it kind of makes sense. Just go ahead and use it. What? No, we'll start with this. Oh, I nearly missed. Try to see if I could hit him. Oh, 
Aurora's here. Say <laughs> not gonna become rideable. Straight from there into our charged adamant slash. Come on. Ready now, we'll use our. There we go. Let's see, I think I need to be I think it's like right here. Need to use that timing. There we go. Let's actually take him up here with a star bensar. up and heal. <laughs> well, that was a good block. At least I got my buff. What are you doing? What's the chance I can hit him?
There we go. Knocked you right on your ass. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's always satisfying to get that stagger. The show Ah, overcharged it a little, but that's fine. Equal lead screen, though. Go ahead and grab these three. It's 50 seconds. It's a pretty cool end screen. The greatsword build for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. And the last build video for this game. That's that's a little sad. Well, all that aside, hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully this helps you with your own build crafting. Hopefully, and the next time you see me will probably be in Monster Hunter 6. Wanna make some beginner guides for that. Anyway, hope you all have a good day, and suppose I'll see you, see you then. So, have a good day, night, and uh, happy hunting out there. <laughs>